Turbochargers versus superchargers. Which one's the best? Which one should you do? Welcome back to another Talking Mods, guys. Today we're doing a topic about something that I mentioned earlier that I wanted to avoid, but actually I realized I welcome your guys' comments. I think the comments is something that helps this community, helps fellow enthusiasts. So please share, post your own personal experience if you've got personal experience. I will be talking in theoretical and I will be talking in generalities here to try to get the concepts through. There are exceptions, but as always, and before we even start, you should talk to whoever is helping you modify your car. For us, it's Mod Bargains. It's our company. We have mod experts who are happy to help you guys who have been doing this for a while and have done installations we have personal experience on many many vehicles we'd be happy to help you guys in catering and building according to what you want and that comes us right into this topic turbochargers versus superchargers and in my head i'm kind of seeing like this whole like street fighter you know two people going at it let's talk about how it works so turbochargers basically you're taking the exhaust the flow that comes off the exhaust is going into a turbine so if you want to imagine either a windmill or those old like things that are moving in grabbing water from the river and they're turning right well that generates power the faster you spin it the more that power you generate now superchargers are a little bit different they're not riding off the exhaust of the motor right they are now forcing air in so they're both centrifuge it's belt driven it's coming off the engine and it's based off how the engine is performing so as the belt drives it it forces the air and basically takes the atmospheric air from around it and brings it in. Think of it almost like a tornado type of power. Um, as much power as possible and forces it into the motor for combustion and increases power. Hopefully that made sense. The theoretical number on it is 46%. So that's an equivalent. So if we were to put head to head, they're equivalent. In terms of power, it's close to equivalent. Turbochargers though, in general, because they're not restricted to the engine, turbines can be made to spin very, very fast. You've got different ball bearings, you've got different sizes, but that affects things, right? So I'm gonna get into that. So you can make them spin very, very fast while the, the supercharger is directly related to the motor. So that creates a restriction based on the RPM. And in the old days, you used to see you're at a thousand RPMs and you're getting a thousand rotations per minute, almost a one-to-one -one ratio. Today, there are new advancements. Again, this changes things significantly where these restrictions from the old days are kind of disappearing. You have to look at every single product or basis for different manufacturers. So using the exhaust system, I guess, is a plus, Using the motor is kind of a negative in the supercharger. Using the exhaust system with turbochargers also creates emissions. That is more likely going to cause problems for you with one, the EPA and CARB. It's going to be hard to get legalized systems for your vehicle, especially in the aftermarket, right? Now, some cars do come with superchargers too. So the great thing about superchargers is they don't have a wastegate. The only smog emissions that come out of it is a supercharger. So it's a lot easier to pass with the EPA or CARB. And so you get a lot more compliant systems. So it's a lot easier for those people who are looking for something that's going to be street legal on there. So now I'm going to talk about, again, the theoretical and I'll explain what they've done to compensate for it. Turbochargers generate, you can say they can generate a lot more power, right? So if we build a bigger turbo with a bigger turbine, we can generate huge, immense power. That's when you start seeing 1,000 horsepower cars, 1,500 horsepower cars. <laughs> Car that was 400 300 they're like hey here's my 1500 horsepower car that depends is that what you're trying to achieve and that is really what it comes down to drivability and drivability it's about balance hold hold your horses <gasps> talk about that in suspension and in power I find it to be balanced it's my personal goal but your goal might be different you guys might want that bigger power people want to win in a straight line drive I mean you your needs are different where you're at is different so a supercharger will have that instant power right at the rpm again remember thinking it's the linear power consistent with it you'll have that instant power gratification all the way from out the band the power band right with turbos generally fine you have a turbo lag and what I mean by that is you're going through your rpm and I drew this out I'm going to show you a theoretical. You're going through it, and then all of a sudden you get to your 4,000 RPM, let's say, and then the turbo really kicks in. It really starts to spool 
and that turbo just, that horsepower just jumps right through the roof, right? When you're driving, if you've ever felt that like big whoosh of that feeling or that kind of rib crushing acceleration, that's gonna usually come from the turbo while the supercharger is gonna have more of that consistent power and drivability. So I drew that out and I will talk in a second about how this is compensated and so forth. So I drew this, probably post some nice graphs for you guys from real stuff. I drew a theoretical right before jumping on this video. Pardon it, I'm sorry, but it's gonna be mine. I'll put it up here. But in the bottom here, I drew a stock horsepower car. This is horsepower, this is your RPM. This is just in generality, right? So in the black here, you see the stock horsepower for a car. The more you press on that gas and the RPM, the higher horsepower until you get to that nice sweet spot. Here it's about 6,000 or so RPM. In my graph here and he's getting about 320 horsepower on here with the supercharger you see this big jump right we talked about a 46 percent let's say theoretically he got his 46 percent jump and he has a higher horsepower off the bat so instead of his 100 he's in the 200 or so always right below 200 and he's gaining at, at the equivalent at the exact same as the oem and equivalent all the way across and with that higher horsepower and this this car here is doing about 500 and something horsepower so theoretically now, if you look at here, we've got the turbo and it's not doing as much power at the beginning power, right? Now, some of you, when you're driving on your normal daily commute or around your homes, you will not have much more power at the beginning of your RPM range here. So first 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, look down next time you drive. What RPM range do you really drive at most of the time? Generally, again, this is theoretically, your RPM range will be down in this area. This is a single turbo here and it will kick in and usually it will surpass the supercharger, especially this is a nice big turbo. And in this case, I think he almost hit 700 horsepower for this car. Theoretically be possible on any 320 horsepower car. This red one is a turbo supercharger here and in black one is a, a stock car. Now, we'll put some real numbers up. Companies who do tuning and build the systems, companies like Cobb, for example, share a lot of their dyno numbers and you guys can hopefully now understand how to read a dyno because that's how a dyno chart typically looks like. Companies like Cobb and them, they take that turbo and they basically will do the proper amount of tuning to get it to boost higher at those, so around here. So it's, you're getting more of that consistent power, not this long turbo lag. In theory, you'll find that most of the OEMs have done this for the turbocharged cars. And you'll see that, you know, companies like Porsche, right? And the 997 on, they basically created a single turbo that had a centrifugal. It had different size fins. So it would move at a certain type of horsepower. It would basically increase as the RPMs are moving. Or if you look back at the 90s, you had the FDR X7, right? They had a twin turbo setup, a small turbo to basically give you the horsepower at the, the lower RPM. Then they had the big turbo, the secondary turbo, for the high horsepower at the higher RPM. Obviously you need to do a lot of mapping for the engine so that the horsepower is nice and consistent. So can this theoretical be overcome? Yes, and generally it is done so very well by the OEMs and very, very, very good experienced tuners. There is a cost to it, right? So that's what I mean by drivability because you wanna have that nice consistent linear power, right? You wanna have that power. So supercharger will get you that right off the bat. You don't need to have as much crazy tuning Superchargers makes it easier for drivability. It also makes it easier to find that. In the case where you do have you know, the different turbos and you have the right tuning, you can make any car better. So I, hopefully that made a lot of sense. I'm trying to explain it as best as possible on why there's so many differences out there. Now this comes down to your budget and what you're trying to achieve. So before I go into that part of it, let me give you some more pluses and minuses. We'll go back to that. Again, I said there's a lag that's a negative for the turbos, instant power is a positive. Positive for the turbochargers is that they're quieter. They're quieter system for your vehicle, so the OEMs tend to like that, right? Unless, of course, you put on a, you know, a wastegate and you're doing the blow-off valve filter, then you're making noise obviously superchargers are going to be louder they have that whine when they're bringing in the air in so there's a negative for the supercharger one big thing here turbochargers as i mentioned get more and more complex and turbochargers in general are i find in my personal experience i'm going to use my personal experience here turbochargers are less reliable this is a big negative for me they require a lot more oil change maintenances are running as clean as possible they generate a lot of blow by there's a lot of different documented things with turbochargers if you do everything right you have the right sparks you, you're constantly maintaining it you can keep that reliability up but just understand in general 
Superchargers are going to be less reliable. Superchargers are easier to maintain. They also have you know, your regular oil change maintenances and all that. They're going to be not only easier to maintain, but they're going to be a lot more reliable. So that's a big plus there. And I've seen cars, I've experienced cars that have 10 plus years of being on a supercharger with no issues and still producing great power you know, plus or minus. This is not really a plus or minus on this, but kind of just an understanding of it. Turbochargers are typically gonna do better with a smaller motor because of the higher RPMs that you get out of them. So like a two cylinder, four cylinder, five cylinder cars, typically cars that you see in Europe because they're trying to be gas efficient, they're gonna use turbochargers, right? Because you can spool that turbo, the turbine quickly. Again, increase that RPM. The superchargers will typically do better and perform better with larger size motors. So let's say it's a V8 or a V10, you're gonna get a lot of better power and consistency. They're gonna do a lot better in performance. So not a negative, but just an understanding of it. What does it all come down to? It really depends on you. It depends on what you are trying to achieve. Every vehicle is different. Every motor that I just talked about is different, right? If you're trying to achieve 500 horsepower, how do you get to that 500 horsepower from your 300 horsepower car, let's say, or 200 horsepower? horsepower car. How do you get there? That's where it comes down to what systems are out there. Is there a twin turbo setup? Is there a nice turbine system out there? Is there a nice kit out there? Or is the supercharger going to be? That's what it really comes down to. And what's the drivability of that system? Have they tuned it? Is it going to have that long lag? These are the big factors I think that make the difference. Please post in the comments. I want to read what you guys think. Everyone, I know this constantly comes up and this debate of turbochargers being better and you know superchargers being better. I think it's what you're trying to achieve, right? I've driven my share of turbo cars, supercharged cars. I have different opinions for every single vehicle where I think one is better than the other. And guys, if you haven't already done so, please give us a thumb up on this subject. And again, I've spoken theoretical. Please don't massacre me on this. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. It helps us all out. And I will see you on the next Talking Mod.